Welcome in everybody to another special edition of the Sick Podcast Recruits Draftcast. Yes, as you can guess from the thumbnail and the title, we'll be bringing on the newest member of the Laval Rocket, Luke Tuck, in just a moment. We got lots to discuss, so let's get into it. Turn up your volume. Because you're about to listen to the Sick Podcast. The Sick Podcast. Recruits Draftcast. And with the first overall selection in the 2023 NHL Draft, the Chicago Blackhawks are very proud to select from the Regina Pats, the Western Hockey League, Connor Bedard. The sickest NHL Draft and Scouting Podcast. It's going to be sick. All right, producer Shane here, joined by my fantastic co-host Grant McCag. Grant, how are you? I'm excellent. Thank you. I'm I'm doing great too. I'm doing great too, and I I hope that our guest is doing great as well. Let's bring on Mr. Luke Tuck. Luke, thanks for taking the time, my friend. How are you? Good. How are you? Can't complain. Can't complain. Excellent. We uh we both saw quite a game yesterday, and uh, Lane's you know uh, Habs Bell Center debut, whatever you want to call it. But uh, that that was that was quite some quite a game there. But today's show. Is all about you, my friend. You you will be hopefully right. We we won't we won't ask you to confirm anything, but assuming for the sake of the show that you'll be making your your AHL debut here Friday against Belleville. Uh, first of all, congrats on the contract, well deserved, right? Welcome welcome to Montreal. Uh, but there were it seemed it seemed like that 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 kind of stretched out a bit. Uh, Lane, I remember Lane posted on Instagram, you know, that you signed. And then three days later, I think you actually did sign. Uh, so a lot of people were speculating, oh, my God, is is he, is he not? Like, you, you had that option of, of you know, not signing, testing, you know, free agency, seeing where you wanted to go. But ultimately, you decided to stay with Montreal. So let me ask you, like, what kind of went into that decision process? What factors kind of pushed you to, to stay in Montreal and, and sign your ELC there? Yeah, it's it's a little bit different uh, going to college compared to major junior where mm -hmm. you can stay four years and then you can become a free agent. Um, for me, it wasn't really uh, obviously becoming a free agent. It was just more of kind of um, my development. And, um, you know, I, for my freshman year in, in college, I um, only played 16 games because of COVID. And then the next year uh, uh, I got injured and then had a good junior year and then a uh, good senior year. And I was just um, being patient, and I think it's better to be um, kind of like you know, you know, when you're ready, you're ready to you know, leave college. And um, and this year, I was just kind of focused on um, my season at BU and having a good year and making a good uh, good push in playoffs and into the Frozen Four. And then we had discussion right after the season. And um, yeah, it's funny because Lane, you know, Lane so called you know broke broke the news and everything. <laughs> Everybody on Twitter is going crazy because they're like, oh, you know, the hockey analyst himself, Lane Hudson, is, is breaking the news from. Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I don't even know what account posted it, but because um, hmm. Montreal didn't officially post it until uh, like yesterday, so yeah, uh, yeah, it was pretty funny. <laughs> so you kind of had sort of let Lane know. Lane was probably bugging you whether you were signing or not yet, right? Well, yeah, we we just we didn't really we actually didn't really talk about it at all in season. Um, which right, is funny, but again, I think we we're just focused on being in the present, and, mm. you know, enjoying our time at BU. And we had a good team there. And then, um, I don't know that that account said I signed. It was just like, I don't know. <laughs> I, I didn't sign. And no, that's it. I, but I, I was obviously planning on signing. And then uh, a couple yeah. of my friends on my team reposted it, and then some <laughs> family from back home. And I was like, they kept saying, congratulations. And I was like, oh, thank you. I was just I just didn't want to explain it to him and then Lane posted it and just went crazy. And then, <laughs> and, and then Macklin posted it, which probably didn't help. No. Oh man. Funny, uh, oh yeah. man. Yeah, he's kind <laughs> of popular for some reason. Yeah. Now um Shane went to the game last night and met uh met the Hudsons after. We had uh, Rob on earlier mm -hmm. this week or last week. Great group. Know. Yeah, that was great. And um I mean, what was it like to uh, – was that your first uh, Habs game at the Bell Center? Um, I believe so it was. I actually – I went to the Bell Center back in 2015 and my brother was playing at the World Juniors and um, 
Okay. It was USA, Canada. It was mm. McDavid was an underager, and Darnell Nurse was there. Uh, Domi was there. I think Ryan I was playing. It was like, yeah. I think I was like <laughs> 13, and I was like, this. We were like the only, you know, the fan, the friends, like, uh, and family of the USA team were the only, you know, USA people in there, and it was on the best atmosphere I've ever seen. It was rocking. And, mm. Yeah. Like, wow, this would be would be amazing to play here. It's funny, it all comes full circle. That's it. That's it. <laughs> that's best. That's pretty special. It was a uh, pretty good atmosphere last night, eh? especially when uh, Slav scored that goal. And yeah. uh, the, the ovation. <laughs> Did you notice just the buzz that you could tell whenever uh, Lane got the puck? Yeah, like, it was just like, yeah, it was crazy because every time, like, we were in, um, I was with all my teammates from BU, they drove up and, um, you know, was it you guys making all the noise or what? No, I, th- I think some guys started it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, anytime Lane was on ice, we're like, give it to him, give it to him. And he got the puck, and all of a sudden you can just feel like, you know, just like the energy would just go up. People got louder and louder. The people started getting on, his, on their feet, and it was special. It was cool. And when he got that assist to Slavkowski for his uh, 20th goal, it was, it was electric. I mean, yeah. we thought we thought that was his goal at first, right? Like it, it looked like it looked like he he shot it in, but you know, Slav Slav tipped it. Uh, I mean, Slav got a pretty nice bonus out of it. I'm sure. I'm sure Lane's going to touch a bit of that too, hopefully. But <laughs> that was that was electric for sure. Uh, yeah. Luke, look, if we can, let's go back to the uh, 2020 draft, right? Uh, 47th overall, get called by Montreal, but. What I want to know is how is it like to get drafted from home? Like, just yeah. just heartbreaking for me. For me, like watching that is like, oh, that's that's terrible. Because maybe you had a good experience. I don't know, but uh, yeah. I, I, you know, if I were to get drafted, I'd want to be in, inside, you know, an arena, people chanting, right? Yeah, I mean, honestly, like it was October like fifth, which is crazy of that year, and <laughs> like nothing was going on. It, it was just like. Honestly, I was just rolling with the punches at that point because, you know, um, my season got ended and we weren't able to go over to, uh, like, the U18 World uh, Championships. That's right. Um, Then, yeah, summer unfolded. It was hard to get ice anywhere. You know, obviously, everybody was shut down. Then you go to school, you don't wear masks everywhere, and it was just like, yeah, this is that. And the combine got canceled and the draft got canceled, and you just felt like you couldn't catch a break. And then, obviously, um, I was able to do it on Zoom, which – um, you know, I was just kind of being a good sport about it. And, you know, I was in the same situation as a lot of other guys. So, um, That's I was amazing. actually at school and my parents and my brother and my sister, uh, drove down, um, and were there with me in the room and, okay. and you know, we were in the hotel and I spent a couple of days with them and then obviously at the draft. And then, uh, we actually went out to dinner after the draft and then, um, I had to leave the next day for the world junior, um, like trials. It was crazy. Yeah. 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 It was crazy. Jeez. Were you at Alex's draft? Uh, I was, yeah, I was in, it was in Philly in 2014. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Did, had you, did you have any uh, indication that the Canadians might be picking you? Did you, with, you know, they had those two picks in a row, right? And yeah. had, you know, I think you had had some interviews with good interviews with them and stuff. And was there any, did you think you might be going to them? Yeah, it's hard to remember because it was a little bit different. My yeah. U18 year where it was like we um, NHL guys come in and interview um, my teammates and me. And um, I think I sat down in Montreal maybe once. And then uh, season got canceled. And then like that's when they were doing all their combine interviews over Zoom. And I think I just had um, a good conversation with them. I'm trying to remember. But um, – wasn't anything where I was like, yeah, they're definitely going to pick me. But um, I don't think there was one team where I, I could like choose where I was like, you know what, they're really in- interested in me. You know, every team has their kind of different, different, um, you know, the drafting tactics or how they talk to the prospects. So, um, yeah, when they picked me, I was obviously you know, really happy. <laughs> it, was, it was awesome. In in the interview process, the, did you get any weird questions? Like we've seen we've seen clips come out of of those combine interviews with That's like just every the, time just the weirdest <laughs> questions because I want to know like some of these just don't make it don't even make sense. I don't know what you get out of them, but did did, did any team like ask you something just just out there? Um, they give you. I'm trying. It's hard to remember, but 
like they they ask you what animal you want to be some some yeah. teams, and I think I don't, really, I, I don't yeah I don't remember what I said, but I think they are honestly looking for something that's kind of out of the ordinary. You want to give a good explanation. Um, uh, yeah, as you said, some people get some crazy questions like that uh, this world and some uncomfortable ones, and I didn't have anything too crazy. Um, okay. Some teams going a little bit more stricter than others, where they kind of try to put the pressure on you and um, try to be stricter with you. But um, I didn't have anything too crazy. That's good. <laughs> yeah, very easy. Did uh, I mean obviously there was speculation um, that you might be considering uh, going to Buffalo? Uh, obviously, you know people were drawing a conclusion that hey, go play with your brother Alex. Had had that. Uh, had that been a consideration for you at all? Uh, I wouldn't really say it like crossed my mind at all. Again, I think I was just, um, you know, you try to keep those distractions. People talk a lot, and um, I'm not gonna lie to you. I you know growing up, you always want to. My brother is six years older than me, and I've always said, you know, I'd be an absolute blast to play with them. And mm-hmm. um, but for me this year, I wasn't like, you know, what? I want to go to Buffalo. It wasn't anything like that. Again, I think. I like the Sam of oil guy and being drafted a, around, you know, almost four years ago um, to this October, uh, I've always wanted to be a Montreal Canadian. And um, I think the 24 Stanley Cup speak for itself. And uh, I was actually fortunate this, this uh, last May to play with my brother at the world championships over in Finland. And that was the right. first time we played to each other with each other. So um, yeah, I wouldn't mind playing against him at some point too. Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I like that. that. Uh, uh, um, Rob was saying that that was such a great experience, learning experience for uh, both you and Lane to uh, go over there and see what it's like to be a pro and to be with pros, play with pros, uh, see how they, you know, act off the ice and and such. And then you, we both saw you at development camp in Montreal, and uh, you look, you really stood out. You had a very yeah. good cap there. Do you think that that experience really helped you going into development camp last year? Yeah, I, was, yeah. I, I think I was really fortunate to get the opportunity to go over the world championships. And um, I just try to go over there with open mind, you know, whatever happens, if I play every game, no games, half the games, I was just going to be who I am and um, be a good teammate and just kind of pick guys' brains and hang around the guys and see their tendencies. So, um, yeah, guys like my brother, uh, Nick Benino was over there, Connor Garland. Um, you know, it was, it was really cool hanging out with them, and they kind of took me underneath their wing. And, um, again, we're there over there for about a month, and all you yeah. do is play hockey and hang out, you know, play cards, you know, hang out in the hotel, practice, you know, repeat and do it, do it the next day. So, yeah, I just think, like, for me, it was – it was uh, a learning experience and I was really curious just going over there to see how the pace was going to be. Um, I think we were playing on a bigger ice sheet over there. I think I don't really remember, but um, yeah, we were in Germany, you know, for a week before the tournament started exhibition. And yeah, again, I was just trying to work my hardest in practice and pick guys brains and then um, just kind of getting that swagger and going into development camp. I felt like um, I came in in really good shape and I tried to make an impact and uh, I felt really good. Mm-hmm. Did the Canadians offer you a contract at that point, or did, I, or did they, were they kind of on board with you, or saying, you know, go play your senior season, uh, develop a little more, and then we'll get back to you at the end of the year. Yeah, I think um, we had some good conversation surrounding that, and I think we weighed all our options. And um, again, you know, going back to BU, it's, it's a hockey hotbed; like they produce a lot of good pros and uh, with the staff there and training staff. Um, I couldn't say no to that. And I thought it was best for me. And um, I'm glad, you know, the, the staff here in Montreal were on board with it and I'm glad it all worked out. Mm-hmm. So how does a fellow with a brother who went to Boston college and is now <laughs> the heck of an NHLer end up at Boston university? Yeah, it's, it's you crazy. Know. I don't think there's ever been like a, a player like that that's done that ever. <laughs> and, uh, oh, it's like the, the, uh, it's the main rival. It mm-hmm. is. It's yeah, absolutely. It's the best rivalry in probably college hockey, I think. And yeah, the battle yeah. of that for a reason. You know, we're about maybe maybe mile and a half up the road from each other, and <laughs> um, it's awesome. But yeah, it's it was weird because 
Um, I think I was recruited when I was uh, 14 or 15. It's crazy how young you're able to mm-hmm. recruit back then. And it, yeah. I was just uh, playing hockey for fun. I didn't think anything of it. And um, then I was getting some looks from colleges. And I did a couple of visits from different schools, just keep my mind open. And I never really got a call from Boston College. Um, and we were pretty, we were a little bit surprised because Alex went there and had a lot of success there. And then I got a call from uh, L.B. O'Connell, the assistant coach at the time at BU, then my head coach for two seasons. And, um, you know, he said, come for a visit. He, he liked my game. And, um, yeah, it was, a, again, I waited a couple, a couple months to commit. And BC never reached out, which is fine. You know, I hold nothing against him. Oh, okay. I just really loved BU. And, mm-hmm. um, again, my brother had a great time at BC. And it was nothing against him. I just, I just liked BU and uh, what they were doing there. So did uh, Alex not speak to you for a while after that? Or what? <laughs> no, he was rising me. I remember growing up when I used to go to Alex's games at BC, I'd be like, oh, yeah, because I like to bust his chops a little bit. I'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, I'm going to BU. I'm going to BU. And he's like, oh, yeah, I'm sure, I'm sure. And then, you know, the day came. Uh, <laughs> and, I Actually happened. and he's like, he always says, um, he hopes BC wins like four to three. And I have a hat trick or something like that. It's funny, but he's, <laughs> he's really supportive. And yeah, I think that that's awesome to be BC for the rest of our lives. It'll be like that. Who did well, Alex cheer for when you faced them in the uh, hockey East championship? Oh, for us, us for sure. <laughs> us for sure. He's a, he's a good brother. He's a good guy. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. funny to us, but they, they, they uh, took it to us for sure. Did you, hmm. you know, you're talking about the recruiting process. Did you uh, consider going to, Providence to play for the Friars? Um, I don't think so. No, they never. Well, really, I, mean, I don't think so. No, you would have been Friar Tuck. I mean, that. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> oh, I I always got to get had, a to, in had there. to get it in there, Grant. Had yeah. to get it in there. I, oh, uh, you got something, Shane? Well, you know this this year right at BU was was your best statistically speaking right 30 points in 39 games but uh felt like your all around game was just took another step right we and the greatest example obviously is against Denver right that PK goal was just oh, chef's kiss beautiful stuff but it's it seemed like you know all around you've kind of progressed and and maybe in in part because of the Habs training staff have you had any contact with you know, their development, like Adam Nicholas, I know uh, Paul Byron is in contact with like Owen Beck and stuff. Like, uh, have you had any contact with these guys uh, throughout the season? Ramage. Yeah, yeah. yeah Ramage too, Jim. Jeez, Rammer, yeah. Yeah, I was, um, past couple of years, I was in touch with, because I think we actually got two to, uh, development camps canceled as well because of COVID or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's kind yeah. of hard for me to come in and, you know, skate with whatever. So they did their best, um, you know, to reach out to me and do video, like Scott Pellerin. Uh, did a lot of video with me and no. uh, Ramage would come to our games a lot. And um, Frankie, Buell. yeah, Frankie, Frankie would come to our games more this year. And um, Adam and I, um, I've known him for a couple years now. He worked with my brother back in the day. And um, yeah, okay. just, we do we do video together too. So like the development staff was great to me and whatever I needed, I asked them to do video. They're they're willing and they watch a lot of my games this year. And uh, I actually skated with Adam all the summer in Boston. Uh, I was out taking classes at school, and he had, he was running a, a pro skate out there in the summer, and I hopped out with them. So, yeah, Adam was great to me, and um, so yeah, it was it was it was good, really good. Beautiful, beautiful. What what a you know, I mean, obviously growing up with an older brother that uh, that made the NHL, and uh, I'm sure you know you, you consider him a mentor and stuff. What? What would you say he's he's taught you about becoming a pro hockey player? Like what what's been the advice and the the things that you examples that he is uh, that he's given that that have helped you out so far? Yeah, Alex is just he's a humble, uh, down to earth, just a good person. Um, he's he's been a great brother to me, and again, I think just again he's he's a leader and um, he's just a really good person. So. Um, Sometimes in life that takes you a little bit, you know, a little bit further. And um, again, his work ethic and his sacrifice growing up, and um, I was able to, you know, watch how hard he would work at home and uh, put in that extra time. And you know how much he really enjoyed the sport and how much he still enjoys the sport. And 
Um, he's a great teammate. I was able to see, you know, what he's able to do for us at the World Championships and um, how he led that team. And he wore a letter over there. So, yeah, I just think Alex is, you know, a really good leader and a really good person. Mm. Do you have yeah. other other brothers and sisters? Sorry. Uh, yeah, have I, have a, I have a twin sister. Oh, really? Eh? Oh, yeah, twin sister. She play hockey? Uh, no, her name's Leah. She does not. She she was a field hockey uh, and lacrosse yeah. player in high school. Yep. Okay. Right. So who got stuck in net then as uh, when you guys were playing hockey? Uh, Alex was he was nice. Like he was too nice to me. Never really picked on me. Uh, <laughs> he was like at that age where it was like a little bit harder. I think like the three four year age is where you're able to pick on your, your younger brother. And I was yeah, he's, yeah. He's older than me, but. Uh, street hockey, I, I like throwing on the pads a little bit, but my dad actually had an ice rink in his backyard. He built it for about like 20 mm-hmm. years. And, Sweet. Uh, yeah, it was, it was funny because uh, Tim Conley used to – he lived next door to us uh, back in oh. UCI. He grew up in, right next door to us. He's I think he's about 18 years older than me. Um, no, I think 18 years older than Alex. I don't know. It's Yeah. yeah. It's confusing. So uh, my dad built it and, you know, Tim would skate back there here and there, you know, show Alex some things. Alex was a lot younger. Um, so, yeah, it was wow. pretty, pretty cool. Yeah, and my dad built it ever since I moved out of the house at about 15. Hmm. <laughs> you uh, you went from 10 points to 20 points to 30 points your last three seasons, like exact. Um, is, it plan, uh, is it plan to score 40 next year in the AHL or what? <laughs> yeah, that would be nice. Um Again, I think just, you know, my style of game, just that power forward game. Um, I'm trying to impact the game um, in a couple of different ways, whether it's on the score sheet or physically, um, just getting that energy. And um, again, I like to play a physical game. So um, whatever it is to help the team, I want to do. Beautiful. Speaking of physical, you uh, you had a few battles in, uh, in college hockey with Stroobs. Uh, I, um, I, I watched, you know, I, 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 uh, cover the Habs as well as, as, uh, draft the draft each year. And, you know, I looked at quite a few of Jaden's games and I noticed one day you were coming across the blue line oh, yeah. and, uh, you met him. Uh, you remember that? I do. Yeah. I, I, <laughs> I don't think I'm going to watch my pass against him again. So yeah. <laughs> you got me good. I remember I was skating up the boards and it cut to the middle, dropped the puck and I turned and I think he was coming right out of the penalty box and uh, he got me good. And, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, that was a, he got me there. It's funny because um, I think early in the year, the year before we got in a fight on the ice and we were like just trying to hit, kill each other out there, just absolutely trying to murder each other. And it was a good battle. It's funny because Ramage was at the game and uh, yeah. Ramage was a hard player uh, when he played. He was a tough guy and he absolutely Love. loved it. Oh, yeah. This past uh, development camp, he put me and Stroops together in a room. Uh, we roomed together. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. We're good buddies. Uh, obviously, just the battles in the ice, but uh, off the ice, we're, we're pretty close. Uh, yeah, I interviewed Stroops at the uh, development camp, and he mentioned, he, like, brought, he said that he brought up that, uh, just kidding about the, you know, the hit or whatever. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I asked him about it because uh, he had a good laugh, but he's a good, he's a good guy, eh? Yeah, he's a, he's a great person. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then also, I mean, you had some great battles with Northeastern, right? And then you also, I, you, you must have played a year or two against Jordan as well. Yeah. I think I played two years against Jordan. Okay. Just, uh, you know, what, how would you describe, uh, uh, Harris as a, as a player? Yeah. Jordan was a really good player in college and, um, he's having a good NHL career right now. And, um, I would just say, you know, he's a, he was a simple puck moving defenseman who, I uh, joined the rush and was really steady on the back end. You know, he never really got beat wide at all. And um, he was really strong in the corners and uh, he's a heck of a skater too. So uh, he, yeah. he was that complete player. Yeah. Uh, Fowler obviously got drafted last year and then you had to face him uh, BC. Uh, did you score any on him this year? I did. Yeah, I scored. I scored in the Beanpot game uh, yeah. to make it 3-1, I think. That's right. Um, yeah, he's he's a good goalie. Like he had a good team in front of him, but I think he made that team look really good. Mm. You know, yeah, not taking any credit away from that team, there obviously had a lot of firepower, but uh, he was a big part of their success. And 
um, he was really steady back there, really calm. And I know him from development camp really well. And it was funny because we'd have some conversation on the ice and I'd be like, oh, you know, what a save. And he'd be like, oh, what a screen. And we just, it was cool. <laughs> he's really competitive in, in the net. He is. And um, he's got a big personality too. And he's going to be a great goalie for the Habs in the future. There you go. That's awesome. Yeah, did you see any of the, uh, you know, the combine stuff the with Fowler and that from last year, uh, the Hab stuff that was posted, he had some, like you say, good personality, you know, it really, really shined through when they were asking him the questions. Uh, you know, I think they asked him what kind of animal you are and all that stuff too. And he had, he had some pretty good answers. Hmm. Yeah. I don't know if I saw any of that, but again, okay. I think that's what teams are looking for just to be, be you, you know, don't be somebody that you're not. And they want to see that personality. Exactly. Um, so, Listen, again, assuming you're playing Friday for Laval, uh, you're coming into a pretty precarious situation there, right? It's, it's a playoff push, uh, and, and Laval is playing against the team that they need to pass in order to make the playoffs. So uh, coming into that situation for you, playing your first AHL game, like how, how are you processing all this? How are you preparing for that? Uh, yeah, if I play, you know, it would be, it'd be great. And, um, again, I think there will be some nerves playing your first pro game it's it's a pretty cool milestone in your career and that's it um i think i'm just kind of asking the guys you know how's the pace how's everything just getting more comfortable to see, uh i guess you only find out when when you're in the game but i think i'm just gonna you know be me and um just prepare how i always prefer prepare for a game um you know at the end of the game it's just a hockey game so yeah um do what is uh best for me before the game mentally and physically warming up so um, yeah, I'm excited. And and, and speaking of, do you, do you usually have like a, like a weird routine before games or any superstitions that, you know, oh, you, you got to put your, your left sock first or anything like that? Um, I think it is time I right skate first. It's first. It's not like a superstition. It's just uh, kind of routine. And um, I don't know. I just take my sticks before every game. Nothing crazy, just the same warm-up routine. Probably drink the same things. That's about it. Nothing crazy. <laughs> yeah. Um, do, do you know any of the guys on Laval? Like, I guess you probably played against Condotta too, I guess, right? But you don't – did you know Do you know Lucas or – Yeah, I played against him um, for two years, I think, or a year – two years, I think. Uh, okay. uh, he was at Lowell, and I saw him at development camp two years ago. And uh, we, were, we were buddies there, and – uh, Sean Farrell, I know from the U.S. program. He was a year older than me, and right, yeah, and yeah, like Riley Kidney at uh, development camp. Same with Joshua and uh, uh, Ryan Becker as well. Has Wa been uh, skating or, or anything like that? You know, or is he? Yeah, he skated today. He did, eh? Mm -hmm. So we might see him on Friday then. Yeah, not too sure. So, well. No, that's good because I hadn't. I'd been wondering if he'd been skating or what, yep. what have you. But uh, I mean, that'd be great to have all hands on deck, boy, for that game because it's you, you have to win both games in regulation, right? So, yep, it's gonna be uh, it's gonna be a good battle. Um, now, uh, uh, tell us about Lane. Uh, I mean. He's, uh, you know, he gets drafted 60 in the 60s uh, because of his size, goes to goes to BU and has uh, one of the best freshman seasons ever by a defenseman and then repeats it again this year. Goes into Montreal, scores a point in his first two games. He's just, uh, he's a pretty determined uh, young man, isn't he? Yeah, um, for sure. He's just... Um... Yeah, again, as you said, um, determined, right? He's motivated, and, again, he loves the game of hockey, and he just uh, wants to be the best player he can be. And um, he stepped up at the right moment, and um, he showed what kind of player he can be. Yeah. What uh, what kind of a kid is he? How would you describe him? Uh, yeah, Lane, Lane's a really good kid. He's, he's a really good teammate. Um, he's more on the quieter side when you first meet him, but in the locker room uh, – He's pretty loose and, um, yeah, nothing, <laughs> nothing too crazy about him. He's, he's a pretty simple yeah. guy and, um, yeah, that's what yeah. I Well, and uh, you, you, what, you think he's going to have a, have a good NHL career? Yeah, absolutely. I think 
um, yesterday it was just a glimpse of what he can do and um, really smart player. One of the smartest players I ever played against and played with and, you know, one of the best uh, passers I've probably played played with as well. So um, he's going to have a long NHL career ahead. So what did you think of the Eichel trade? How did you guys take that? Um, it was different for sure. Like my brother called me, uh, I was sleeping. It was around like 1 a.m. And he was like, yeah, you won't believe it. Uh, I got traded. I was like, what? Really? Because I, uh, I heard there was rumors uh, him and Jack you know, getting traded for each other and another pick and prospect. And um, he was shocked. And I was like, no way, no way. He's like, yeah, uh, I did. And then. He called my parents shortly after. So uh, it was a little bit of a surprise. And uh, Alex loved his time in Vegas. And obviously, when you're getting traded, it's kind of hard at first. And it's a little bit upsetting when you know team doesn't really want you, I guess, anymore. It's hard to say like that. But um, he was really excited to go to Buffalo. And um, he's had a great time so far. It's pretty. It's about two hours from home. So yeah, um, yeah. we are, we are uh, shocked, but you know, really happy at the same time. We don't have to take – four hour plane right out west yeah yeah and he well i mean he had a breakthrough year last year with with the sabers too right and yeah and, and got more opportunity in the top six type thing right yeah yeah he definitely took on more of a, a dominant role and um he had that opportunity to kind of step up uh i think he had the 74 points or something not too sure what it was yeah but, um, yeah, he yeah. showed what type of player he could be and playing in that top three role um, did really well. What, a little bit bittersweet then, I guess, to see uh, Vegas win the cup? Obviously, you had some friends on the team and stuff, right? But Yeah, I mean, uh, I don't know about bittersweet. Obviously, Alex had won some of the Stanley Cup, just like any other hockey player. And I think he was really happy uh, for his teammates and for his buddies uh, to see him go on that run and, um, obviously Vegas is a heck of a team and they did, they did a great yeah. last year and they deserved every bit of it. But you can always think, you know, geez, that could have been me, right? You know, he had his chance in 2017, his first year in the league to, you know, win it in Washington. That's true. Uh, yeah. What about you yeah. in this first cup? So, um, yeah, he's, he's, he's still hunting, hunting it down. <laughs> what, what do you, uh, what do you feel you still need to work on in your game the most yeah i think um obviously you want to pinpoint a couple things in the game um again every player wants to get better at everything but i think for me um i need to pick you know two three things that i can really excel at, at the next level and um try to stand out more than another guy because you know i think at the world championships i, I realize you know the guys that are you know, playing pro hockey in the NHL for 10, 15 years, um, you know, they may not be the fastest. They may not have the hardest shot, but the thing that they're good at, you know, they're better than everybody else at. So I think just for me, you know, f physicality is uh, with or without the puck, uh, creating space for myself and um, kind of getting open in the in the small areas in the slot and the soft spots like that and give myself some more scoring chances. So, again, I think uh, physically with the puck and um, – obviously get a little bit faster. Hmm. Well, you, uh, you know, you look at the Montreal's lineup and you can, you can see that there isn't a players of your mold, that many of them. And I think, uh, uh, you know, when you're looking at signing, you can see the opportunity there, right. For perhaps a middle line role, a physical two way, two way, uh, player with size, right? Yeah. Um, uh, yeah, that's what you, you you hope when you sign here is an opportunity, and um, I think a player like me can uh, complement some of the players at the next level. And again, I'm just kind of staying the moment here and um, enjoying my time here, um, and going into the off season, just work as hard as I can, and um, again, you know, work with the development staff and um, see how they can get me better. And I think at the end of the day, it's just going to be up to me. Mm -hmm. Nice to see you back there, Shane. You got yeah. Uh, nice to be back. Sorry about that. My computer just crashed. Yeah. Uh, never <laughs> but, fun. Uh, I've got a couple more questions, and then we'll, uh, you know, we can let them go. But uh, absolutely, you got anything else to uh, ask them? Uh, well, I mean, I, I like to ask every every player that we get on. 
uh, that has been around Martin Saint Louis. Ha have you had any interactions with Marty yet? Uh, briefly, I saw him uh, around Christmas time uh, okay. when my brother was playing this uh, Montreal and Buffalo. I came to the game and I went on a lock and after and um, shook his hand. He asked me how the season was going. It was brief. They had to bounce out of there and uh, at development camp, he talked to um, to all the players there. So. Um, yeah, he's a really humble guy, really down to earth guy, and um, his resume speaks for himself. That's it. Like if, man, if there's a coach I'd like, I'd like to play for. That's it's that guy, right? He's he seems to get the best out of each player because he's been in just about every one of their shoes, right? He's seen it all. He's been through it all. So, um, I mean, I'm, I don't want to speak for yourself, but I'm sure you know you're pretty excited to to be around a play a coach of that caliber, right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I've only heard great things about him and uh, being a player who started from the bottom undrafted and um, took advantage of the opportunity he was given and That's it. Uh, being an undersized guy back, back when the game was, uh, you know, a lot of big players, everybody was six, three and uh, he excelled at the role he was given and he took advantage of the opportunity again. So um, yeah, he's a motivator and I've heard guys love playing for him. Mm-hmm. Syracuse, Syracuse, New York boy. Who did you uh, grow up cheering for? Uh, it was the Sabres, mostly Tim Conley. Again, he played for the Sabres when I was yeah. growing up. So yeah, I was yeah. always uh, always a Sabres fan. Cool. Yeah. So when Alex got traded to Buffalo, you know, the fan in you, right, probably thought that was kind of cool. Yeah, I was pumped. I was excited for him, and yeah, he was he was fired up for sure. Yeah, Let's and the it. parents or whatever are saying, "Hey, great! We don't have far to go." They get to a lot of his games, I guess. Uh, yeah, they do. They they go as much as they can. Um, this season, my parents were bouncing between Boston and uh, Buffalo, and it was funny because he got traded. And my dad's like, "Oh, I got to dig, dig all the gear out of the attic and dig all the you know all the old t-shirts and hats." And <laughs> yeah. <he was> excited. <laughs> yeah. Did he, uh, was he a Sabre, like a Gilbert Perot fan growing up and all that? Uh, it's funny because my dad wasn't really a hockey fan growing up. Never played oh, really? Hockey. Yeah. yeah, both my parents never played hockey. And um, okay. when wow. they moved to uh, the house that we're at now, our neighbor, um, they used to rollerblade for exercise, my neighbor. And then he got into a men's league game when he was around 33. I don't know. I think he skated a couple of times before that, but. Yeah, he just played men's league at the local ice rink and, you know, he had to throw him underneath the bus. He wasn't that good, but uh, <laughs> my, uh, yeah, my grandpa pretty much got um, my brother into hockey. My, my grandpa just loved to rollerblade for fun. And uh, my brother first started playing roller hockey and uh, then my grandpa started watching hockey and that's how they got into it. And it's funny because Tim Conley's right next door. It's, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Funny, uh, uh, yeah. It's crazy. Huh. Well, I do a draft guide every year, and uh, I'm finalizing my list. Um, give me the case for uh, your teammate going first overall, Macklin. Yeah, uh, good easy. Yeah, the, yeah. It's his numbers speak for itself. Um, he's going to play in the NHL for 20 years, and um, it's pretty impressive. I mean, a lot of good people don't realize he was came to college a year early. Like he's not even a late birthday. So yeah, um, right. he's turning 18 in June. Like he doesn't, yeah, have, yeah. <laughs> he doesn't even have his driver's license. I'm not even kidding. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. Thank God at school, nobody really had cars. So he didn't have to drive anywhere, but it's crazy. I, I couldn't imagine being at school at 17. And, um, I think he had a lot of, a lot of good guidance from, you know, his parents and, uh, he had an older brother that was there too. And, um, yeah, He's, you know, as talented as you guys see him and shifty and really dynamic skater. And he's got an NHL caliber shot and mm -hmm. he's really good defensively too. You know, he's physical and he may not, may not go out there and kill a guy, but he's not afraid to, you know, get dirty in the corners. And, you know, he really wants to win. He's competitive as hell. Shane was saying that uh, he saw him the other day and he's uh, pretty well put good, together already. Good frame. Good frame. Yeah. He's like pretty thick for being 17 years old and yeah that's he's, it. he's solid yeah does not look 17 at all I, I mean again i think about me when i was 17 i was a little pipsqueak right so looking at him i'm like okay you know if, if he's like that at 17 like nhl teams are gonna love that that's uh that's very encouraging 
course. You still are, Shane. <sighs> taller than you, Grant. Taller than you. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, uh, Macklin's, uh, I've, I've heard nothing but good things about his character, too, and leadership already. Very mature for his age. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, he's he's uh, mature, as you said it. And um, I think going to BU was great for him. Uh, the leadership staff we had there uh, with our coaches and, and players, I think it was perfect for him. And um, he had a great guidance along the way. And um, I think Coach Pandolfo was, was great for him as well. It's funny because he's – you know, he's goofy, uh, I think, and nobody really knows that. He's pretty laid back, and he lo he loves to keep it loose in the locker room. And, uh, again, he's a great teammate. He's funny, and um, he's been an absolute joy to be around. And I've learned a lot from a player like that who has had a lot of pressure on him for the past yeah. probably two, three, four years and uh, who's going to probably play in the NHL next year, depending on if he goes back to college or not. I'm not sure, but um, it was pretty impressive to see – how he was able to handle that pressure and just kind of embrace it and enjoy it. Mm -hmm. Where, where'd Montreal, where's Montreal? Uh, does Arizona still have a game left, Shane? Yeah, they, they played tonight okay. against Edmonton. So Montreal is going to be either five or six yeah, for the yeah. draft lottery. I guess you wouldn't mind if Montreal won the draft lottery, eh? Oh, absolutely. And I love to play with them. I played with, <laughs> yeah, in the future, it'd be awesome to play with Mac. When we played together. Yeah. Uh, but the first half of the year, and it was, he made it easy for me. Hmm. Yeah, you guys were, uh, that's right. You're on his line quite a bit. And, uh, you, you know, it was a great line. And um, it, it must have been tough that Denver game was uh, was close. I, I thought you guys had, uh, you know, had the play in, in uh, overtime and that. And it just, you know, it's too bad that uh, it, it didn't go your way, right? Yeah, it's just... It's one of those games where I think we're out shooting them 30 minutes into the game. It was like 17 or 18, like three or four. It felt like, you know, we had the game in our hands. And um, obviously, you know, in hockey, anything can happen. And um, they had four power plays. We had none. And I'm not saying anything about the refs. Like, you know, it's part of the game. And I think every penalty that we took, it was a penalty. And um, I think we had a lot of opportunities. Again, you know, the goalie played really well. And, um again i think we you know it was one nothing they tied up one one and then those are you know that's what happens fluke goals like that will go in and mm -hmm. our goalie played unbelievable all game had two like top sports center top 10 plays and yep. yeah um so he was excellent he was excellent and, you know give credit to denver you know they stuck to the game plan and they defended our top guys really well and um you know they, they're really well coached there as well and um there's a reason they won it all that's it. Well, there's no uh, shame in uh, in in that loss because uh, you guys played played great, and uh, you know you had a great great career, and love to see your progression. And I know I I tweeted out uh, you know that night like Habs better sign this guy, and I I was really glad when they did. So I think you bring you bring something to the to the organization that they lack in, and uh, I really hope that you uh, you make the team someday. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. All right. Grant, you got anything else? No, that's it for me. Sounds good. Well, Luke, we really appreciate you taking the time, my friend. And and please let Alex know that I'm very grateful. I won my fantasy league in large part because of him. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> big, big thank you to Alex for that. <laughs> love it. I love it. Uh, okay. He, he, yeah, what a trade that was. I was uh, I was very pleased with that. So anyways, uh, all the best to you. Best of luck with Laval. Looking forward to seeing your debut, my friend, and, and have a good one. Take care, man. Thank you. Really appreciate you coming on, uh, you know, pretty busy week. And you got to win, win those two games this weekend, please, so we can see uh, <laughs> see the boys in the playoffs. I want to so, get down to Laval. If awesome. I do, I'll, uh, I'll make sure to uh, come and say hi. Great. Great. Looking forward to it. Okay. All right. Thank you. Sounds good. Take care, man. Beautiful stuff. Luke Tuck, everybody. Uh, I think won a lot of fan points there with, with Habs fans, that's for sure. Great, great interview, Grant, eh? Yeah, for sure. Uh, mature mature young man. Uh, very impressed. Brilliant. First Absolutely. time, uh, first time, you know, meeting him, even if it's online or whatever, but uh, very impressed by him. And I think uh, 
I was told he's a serious uh, student, like a, of the game, mm-hmm. and you can tell that he's, uh, you know, he's going to put in the work that he needs to do. And I think we'll see him someday on on the Canadians, and that I think that's absolutely, great. absolutely. I'm looking forward to that to that day. I I hope uh, I hope the rest of the BU guys can show up too for for his Habs debut. That'd be great. Uh, and that'll that'll do it for for us uh, today, guys. Thank you all for tuning in. Stay tuned for our regular show later this week. Uh, we're going to talk about the U18s, right? The Canada team has been named, so uh, lots to talk about in junior hockey. Uh, we appreciate your support. Leave us a comment. Leave us a subscribe, a like, all the good stuff. Don't forget to go check out Recruits.ca for all your draft and Habs information. Grant. Thank you. Thank you as always. Have a good one, everybody. See you soon. See you tomorrow. And that's a wrap. Hope you don't miss us too much until next time. Follow the sick podcast recruits draft cast on YouTube, Facebook, Google play and Apple podcasts.